I learned by reading the name DeMar Hamlin today. I learned about who he was, and there's not a lot of information around him. Like, it's sixth-round pick, it's Pittsburgh, uh, but you, you don't have a lot of— uh, to give him a humanity— so that you understand that it's just not another number out there, that there's someone in that helmet that is making those grown men cry on the field and they don't want to play and they can't play afterward because they are feeling the horror more emotionally and personally than even an America that's watching whatever it is, 10 million strong. A, a, what was a big, important football game right up until it wasn't, last night when we say that as they go to 17 games health is the most important thing it's not making money is the most important thing and this is not just to blame the nfl because the players association agreed in collective bargaining to more games that would have been the last game of the nfl season regular season last night that's how it would have ended in the first quarter with men crying on the field and an emergency where someone had to be taken to a hospital in 16 minutes to save his life if there was a 16 game schedule you're saying that would have been the final play now they've got to play another game as i tell you about all the injuries all over the place on the field you are in a position where this quandary the ethical quandary of this thing we love there is no way to stop it that we will talk about it today and we will talk about how this brings perspective but next weekend it won't next weekend when your fantasy team is involved and your gambling is involved you will not be thinking about this this is something we pause for a moment to to make the content around it I do wonder if the players will be thinking about it because they have now seen something and experienced something that they've never seen and experienced before, at least the players in the, in, in, on those two teams, if they'll think about it moving forward because you had a play that you see just about you know every possession in the NFL or certainly in every game in the NFL result in a guy needing CPR to stay alive on a football field and if I'm one of those players, Josh Allen, I don't know, Dan. I don't know how I would feel. I don't know if I'd be able I don't to know. continue to I, play I, this season. I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know either. I would say to you, having talked to people in that sport, they will give some articulation to the idea that warriors cannot consider consequences or they would not be warriors. Like, that's not how that one ends up working. And I will tell you again if uh, if you want to listen to an interview listen to the last 10 minutes we did with thomas jones a few weeks ago to understand what it is the pressures on these people to play through anything because they get a great deal of their identity from being a great deal tougher than the people who want their autographs or want pictures with them or they they there there is in that sport to, to be someone who makes a great deal of money at the top 1% of the top 1% in the violence business, Stugat, you can't be someone who walks around and thinks that that's going to happen to you or you would spend all of your life in fear. But I, th- I I think those guys, I think with those injuries, like Toradol and getting yourself back on the field and playing with pain, that's something that most players, just about every player, every team has experienced. What they experienced last night is something They've never seen, they've never experienced, it had to be jarring, it was jarring to us at home. I can't imagine if that is my friend or someone that I consider to be family, and I'm sitting right there five feet away watching it, and now knowing that your, you know, run-of-the-mill football play could potentially kill me. Now knowing that, knowing that is totally different than thinking maybe it can, maybe it wouldn't, they've seen it now. And they'd seen it happen to a guy that they love, a guy that they respect, a guy that they consider to be their brother. I don't know how they move forward. I'm not saying they won't. I'm not saying you're wrong. Well, I'm not saying the they, machine's they ever going to stop. They couldn't last night. They couldn't move right. forward na- last night. Dale Earnhardt Jr. saw his dad die in a car crash in a race. I know. I, like... No, but I I mean, I think, you know, race car drivers go in with, hey, I might crash into the wall and that might happen. I don't think NFL players thought to themselves, hey, typical play, I could die. I don't think they thought that. I kind of feel like. I think they do. Yeah. 
maybe they do. I could be wrong. I don't know. I, I mean, and, and you Ju have judging by their reaction, that was something they've never seen or they, experienced. It's not before. how they approach every play. I might die on this play, but when they get into football, especially the earlier levels. And then more professionally, they understand the risk that that sport carries, yeah. especially now that we know about brain injury. Right? But you, like, they always say that and they kind of live through it. But you see their faces oh, last night. Are they really prepared right. for what they've gone their whole life saying? It's kind of like Ryan so, Clark spoke and, and to this are, last are, are night. Are we as viewers prepared for that as well? Because we watch this sport on television and we make at least some bargain with it's, maybe we're going to watch someone die. But I mean, it happened with the Tua thing that happened in, in that same stadium in week four when we all watched, we were all horrified. Like we mentioned in the local hour, he was in the open field two weeks later and we were scared for that one Pittsburgh game. But then I forgot about his head injury stuff until it happened again this past weekend. It's insane, right? It's insane. Especially when it happens in the moment, everyone's going to react the way that, like it would have been, we would have lost our minds if guys were like, "All right, come on, line up." Like if someone had reacted like that, that would have been shocking and jarring. But the reality is, like the old song goes, nothing stops the NFL. Like by today's Tuesday, everyone's reacting. Every show, every podcast, right? What point in the week are we just talking about next week's fixtures, right? At what point? Because it's going to happen by Sunday. We're all football again. Remember, was it Ryan Shazier? Was that the guy for, yes. for That was one of those moments. What do you mean? Doesn't it depend on what happens to the player? Absolutely. But Ryan Shazier, when Ryan Shazier happened for the Steelers, again, that was a moment where we we're like, holy crap. You're making the distinction that it happened in the field of play because Marlins took a couple of days and they were right back at it after they lost Jose Fernandez. It didn't happen on the field. So is this like a, especially traumatic because it happened on the field? Well, this, this is something I think that doesn't have a lot of precedent in the social media and video age among all of us where we are all struck with the same fear and horror. There are degrees of it, but everyone's feeling some version of the same kind of traumatically helpless on, holy shit, did I just watch Faces of Death during an NFL football game where I was just here for, oh, look, 11 and 4 against 12 and 3, another Monday night. I'll spend it with the Mannings or whatever. And now, what am I doing? I'm grieving and being reminded that this thing that I love has consequences that, Stukats, yes, it'll be different what the fear is if he, God help him, emerges from the hospital okay and if he doesn't actually die. But I'm wondering, and I'm putting in front of the audience, as I see it covered everywhere, and I don't see a lot of new ground being covered, how sustaining the change of perspective is. Because when we've talked about it in the hypotheticals, Dugat, it has to be a player that we really care about and feel like we know. It's what's happening with Tua. Oh, I saw him in college. I kind of know that guy. Oh, his brain is getting scrambled. He's very young for that. Should he keep playing? You have to have an emotional connection. It's mm. not a regional connection. Mm. You have to have an emotional connection of, do is this human being someone who I care about in order to have the perspective and the grief last in a way that keeps you chained? You're right, but that's from a fan perspective. I'm talking about the player's perspective who have now seen, who have witnessed, wow, the game that I love, that I grew up playing, on any play, that could be me. And that's a different feeling. Like, I, I do wonder, yes, you're right, on the fans. I do wonder how the players experience I, I that. Would, now that they know, oh, my God. My, my experience with this, you say now that they know, my experience with this is that football players do not love this beast the way that you love this beast because they know this beast better than you know this beast. And so they love Sundays. They all love Sundays. Sundays are pretty great, except for this one thing that's in the middle of it that could be pretty terrible. And it's the risk. It's why... It's built into the contracts. They share all of this money because there is great risk in that job, risk in that job that doesn't come with liability to your employer. Like, But, Dan, I think the risk they thought, they thought until last night they were taking is, yeah, I can get injured. I can even get paralyzed. But now they know, wait, I could die? I, I might need oxygen I, on the field? I, I did not. I learned last night that a sharp hit to the chest can stop the heart.
That is not something that I knew until really I did not know that that could happen in a football game. I did. I was ignorant to the idea that uh, what would look like a routine hit could stop the heart. The was it the little league where the kid got hit with the ball in the chest and now they all wear like a chest protector, which is again that's a wild solution to to a risk like that. But yeah, like. A direct blow to the chest, sure. I think the craziest thing is this, and this is to guys. This is to your point. I, I brought up Ryan Shazier earlier. Like when you see a play like that, you're like, "Ooh, wow!" You know, like it, it looked crazy. The the wild thing about this Hamlin play is that it looked routine. It yes. didn't look like it. It didn't look what we. If I told you yesterday afternoon, by the way, there's a guy is going to get hit and he's going to ha- go into cardiac arrest and they're going to have to give him CPR. Uh, out on the field for nine minutes. If I told you that, you would imagine like a cruise missile would have destroyed his his protective uh, you know uh, uh, gear and all that, and it would have shattered to a million pieces. You wouldn't think it was like a, a fairly routine play, and that's the crazy part. Yes. It's not that hey, I could die doing this. It's like oh, it didn't even oh, take. I mean, it's the- not it's not just that it's a fairly routine play. It's a fairly routine play between the small guys. Yeah. Like that's that's the risk. That's what you're watching every week. That's w- they're braver than we are. 